How you doing today, guys? Let's get a review on this Spyderco Lightweight Manix. This is the S110V version. Had to try it. Like 120 bucks. S110V, full flat ground. That's a crazy good deal. Um, I just had to do it. And they're still in stock at a few shops. You just kind of have to look around. I uh, thought I missed the boat. Spyderco must have ran another run of them. I'm not sure if this is a sprint run. Uh, if I remember right, there was no sprint run paperwork in the box. So this might be part of their regular lineup. I don't know. You guys probably know better than me. But uh, had to get it. Uh, I've only been carrying it about two or three weeks. So I can't really give you a full report on what I think about the S110V. But I know I've only had to touch it up like three times. And that was just because I wanted to. Like it was still definitely work sharp. And I've been cutting everything I possibly can. Like when we finish our gallon of milk, I even cut the jug in half to flip it over and fold it into itself so I can put more recyclables inside the gallon. Yeah, silly stuff like that. But just, you know, just to cut with it, cutting as much cardboard as possible. Uh, the camera just froze there. I don't know how that's going to come out, but... We're going to keep going because I don't like to edit. We'll keep it real. Gorgeous action on it. Uh, you probably have the same questions I did if you don't have one of these in hand. What do you think about the All FRN? Keep in mind, this is the lightweight Mannix. Uh, keep in mind the application. This is going to be an EDC blade, a slicing blade. This is uh, a certainly strong lock. Uh, I think Spyderco even rates it as one of their hard to use locks. But keep in mind that with this full flat grind, uh, this is more geared for slicing. So I think the FRN online handle is completely acceptable, especially when you consider the three ounce uh, weight that it comes in at. Of course, I destroyed that when I put this heavy lanyard bead on here, but it's all right. It's cool. Um, like the wire clip again they went with the wire clip it does carry great there's enough tension on it to hold it in your pocket very secure uh, but lighter weight right and also uh, almost looks like uh, not quite knife like in your pocket it's a great EDC clip doesn't have that much flex side to side and let's talk about the construction again I'd already said this was unlined the only real liner that I can see, I have not taken this apart, and I don't believe you really can because this is a riveted knife, so you can't really disassemble this. Although, I might pick up another one to reconstruct this. <laughs> kind of a pipe dream because I'll never get the time, but uh, do like carbon fiber. Replace the FRN with carbon fiber and then do a back strap here out of carbon fiber or something like that. But uh, I can see where it's milled in in here just for like uh, looks like a partial partial liner around here. Hopefully this is staying focused. Yeah, I, I don't think we're going to be able to see in there. You can see the spring for the ball lock. Again, if you're familiar with the Manix, that's a ball lock in there. And it rolls around. I don't know if I've ever did a disassembly video kind of explaining this lock and what I think about it. It's gorgeous. Nice smooth action. Uh, when you acid wash these you have to keep this whole back clean because that's what the ball rolls on this whole tang around. I know I should be talking about that in a knife review but I can't help myself. Uh, the FRN does have some like ribbing underneath there. Maybe you can see there. See there and there. So there's some cross sections in there. There's a few. Uh, so it is sturdy. This does not feel like a cheap toy. Uh, but you can certainly tell it's just FRN. Like if you really crank down on it, you can see it flex a little bit. Again, keeping in mind the application that this is an EDC, more slicer uh, oriented knife, something you know EDC type stuff not prying you're gonna be fine 
I don't see how you could break this handle in a regular cutting task. I I would put anything up against this. Like uh, I could slice. I've got some tires. Maybe I'll slice a big fat mutter tire. <laughs> mutter tire. Anyways, there's probably a joke in there somewhere. Anyways, uh, yeah, construction's great. I have no complaints on it. Uh, they did kind of mold that jimping in there. Much like the Manix has. So they tried to mimic some of that. Although this actually works as jimping. Where this does not. That's almost like an indexing point. You can see it's not deep at all. Which is fine with me. This little bit on the front choil of the blade here is enough for me. This is enough on the spine for me here. That was actually one of my complaints about the Manix, was all the jimping all the way around it. So the lightweight version, mimicking that, but not really working, that's fine. That's more of an indexing point. In the dark, I can tell exactly where I'm holding this knife, right? Just by the bumps alone. So they also did the same thing underneath. You can see this is thinner, the FRN. Again, probably not by much, but it is a touch thinner. At least I thought it was. Yeah, it is. You can feel a little bit. It's not by much, though. I thought it was thinner. really did. Maybe it's just because it's so light and it carries so well that I thought it was thinner. Showing you the construction here. My blade was perfectly centered. Or was. I don't know if I sat on it wrong. A quick tip on these knives. FRN knife, especially something like this. You can actually just banana these things. You can do this to a few of your single bladed slip joints. If you're really careful, I know it works with the pair of twos too. Uh, there's not much adjustment here. I can't can't these scales. I should do another video on that. Just tips and tricks how to center up your blade. Uh, but here's a quick one, okay? So this handle has to get moved this way. You can literally banana this handle just a little bit. See how that tip walked over there? Just do a few slight bends like that. And there it is. Nice and center. And it'll stay that way until you resit on it. Maybe carry it in your back pocket or whatever. It doesn't affect the function of the knife. Just for you OCD types like myself, I really like this knife. That's the truth. But you got to keep in mind that I don't mind FRN. I've done a video on that in the past. FRN is a great handle material and it's very economical. You know, it's kind of cheap to produce, it's very strong. This is not your standard plastic. This is fiberglass reinforced plastic. Okay, let's talk about that for a second. Take, uh, uh, how, how could I explain this best? Most of you guys probably already know this, but it's almost like pour a concrete slab, right? And it gets really hard. That's gonna break, but once you put rebar in it, just because I have these pine needles here, once you crisscross, you know, rebar in it, you add a lot of strength and rigidity to that concrete, okay? Now let's talk about uh, materials. If you were to just take regular epoxy and just pour it into like a dish, right? That epoxy would get very hard, but it's very brittle, okay? So G10 will take like fiberglass layers, right? And Micarta does the same thing. It's just the cloth. And then you impregnate it with resin. Now think about what cloth is. Cloth is a bunch of interweaved fibers, right? Reinforced, reinforcing that epoxy. Same thing with carbon fiber. Carbon fiber is carbon fiber threads weaved in, right? And carbon fiber itself is a strong material. But once you reinforce it with epoxy, it's a really strong material. Why am I saying the obvious here? You guys probably already know this. Because this plastic has the same thing going on. It's fiberglass reinforced uh, plastic, FRN, right? Fiberglass reinforced nylon, I believe. Is that right? 
fiberglass reinforced nylon. I don't know. It's a very, very strong handle material. Uh, you can break it, but it's going to bend a lot before it breaks. We should do that on a video. Take uh, some old FRN scales. I know I've got a few laying around, a few Pingle scales. And just see what they actually take until they break. Because FRN is a lot stronger than a lot of people think. Uh, knife connoisseurs, we don't really gravitate to FRN after, you know, you get past your entry level knives. You kind of think, yeah, yeah, it's, you know, a lot of people accept that it's a good material, but we just kind of move on. You know, and I'm kind of like that too, I'm not going to lie. I don't mind the way it looks, but it's not as attractive as a nice carbon fiber, online carbon fiber handle here, right? So, that's what I think. And then, uh, just the way they pulled it off with the ribbing inside there. Uh, it's a very strong knife. And then where it matters, where the reinforcement actually matters, is this back strap here. So this butts up against that. And then I believe, from what I can see inside here, it looks like this ball is encased by this little half liner that's in here. It's like a small little piece of metal probably sunk down into the pockets of the FRN. It'd have to be to get, create that clearance in there. So you got a strong lock, a strong stop, because you're not going to blow through, no matter you know how hard you push down on this, you're not going to blow through that and that. If you are, you should be using a fixed blade, right? So slicing oriented, S110V, full flat ground, uh, holds an edge forever. Again, really, you can almost see. Can you see the factory edge still on there? You could just see why I ran it across my uh, Spyderco Ultra Fine Stone and then stropped it up. And it really didn't even need that. I just did it. Just to do it. <clears throat> just to do it. So. It's a hard steel. Don't let it deter you though. Because uh, if you have a diamond loaded strop, you'll be able to keep this pretty sharp. If you have ceramics, uh, my Ultra Fine did work on it. Any kind of reprofiling, you're going to want diamond hones. You guys with uh, Edge Pros probably have that taken care of. You guys with Wicked Edges have that taken care of. Uh, grab yourself maybe a coarse DMT. They're like $25, $30. Uh, if you're comfortable freehand sharpening, you'll be fine. I'm almost wondering. That's what I wanted to uh, have this knife for. I wonder... Does the S110V, how does it respond? Does it like a more toothy edge? Are the carbides in the steel matrix, are they larger? Do they prefer a toothy edge or do they prefer a nice, like an M4 steel where it's a nice fine powdered steel? Uh, they really like to be polished edges from my experience. I'm not an expert, just going off uh, what I have found my experience. So. I don't know, it's gonna be interesting. And I'm gonna try it both ways. I'll sharpen it with a coarse DMT and then run it on a strop just to kind of keep a polished toothy edge, if that makes sense. Create the tooth with the coarse stone, coarse diamonds, and then when you strop it up, it will strop the micro serrations that are on that coarse edge. And then I'll go all the way to like a mirror polish. Or if it can be mirror polished, I don't know. S110V is pretty hard. I'm not quite sure what Spyderco is running these at. If I had to guess, at least 60, 62 maybe. I don't know. I'd have to hit the forums and see uh, see what they're testing at. Or see what their, their goal was. I like the knife a lot. I highly, highly recommend it. Uh, I don't know if I recommend it over the G10 version. This feels like a more sturdy, stout knife. But keeping in mind the application, you're still limited to this full flat grind. Same blade thicknesses, right? This is rounded spine, so it looks a little bit thinner. But you can see on the jimping area here, same blade thicknesses. So do you really get any ad added extra benefit to these liners here uh, in the G10? I don't know. The knife connoisseur uh, in me prefers the look of the G10 construction and the liners, you know, and I don't mind a little bit of extra weight for that. 
that's not to detract from the lightweight Manix. Uh, just saying, if you only purchase one, I might recommend the G10 version. Uh, if you really like the idea of a super lightweight knife, go with the lightweight Manix, obviously. If you don't mind FRN, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's a great knife. It really is. Wanted to talk about a few fit and finish issues. Not really an issue, just something to note. I always like to be totally honest and upfront. And because I purchase all these knives with my own money, I can do that. I'm not tied to anybody. So, <laughs> excuse me. Keep in mind the price point. This is about a $100 knife, $120, give or take. Keep in mind that you're getting the S110V full flat ground with Spyderco's heat treat. You know, you're getting a lot right here. To me, this is almost worth your $120. Anything on the back end is just a bonus. Keep that in mind as I go over this. All the grinds were pretty good. They're a beautiful satin finish. Very well ground. Uh, but right here, before I rounded the spine, maybe you can see where they did meet up exactly. See how this grind comes up here and ends right here. This one kind of ends back here. So they're a little bit mismatched. Hopefully I can show that off. There, there. That's really nitpicking and looking for something wrong. Totally acceptable on a $120, $120 production knife that features this blade steel. Just something to note. Uh, also, the back strap. You can tell this is a FRN molded piece, not a custom knife. Uh, it's a little bit low right here, so it's not perfectly flush. There's a few gaps in here. And then you can see uh, right there it's about flush. And then right here it's a little bit proud. Again, all perfectly acceptable on a knife that costs this. Uh, all the molding on the volcano grip, everything like that's totally acceptable. Uh, fit and finish issues, none. Beautiful action. No side to side play. No up and down. Uh, mine did ship with a centered blade. So all that bananaing and all that, that must have been something I did as I was carrying it and using it. Yeah, it's going to happen. It's all FRN. It's certainly not flimsy. You can see my fingers turning white here to really flex that blade you're gonna the, the handle you're gonna have to really try to flex it so that's it did I kind of destroy the lightweight by hanging a full ounce or ounce and a half bead on here probably I'll do a review I've got some beads to show off and lanyards we'll do a lanyard video these beads are larger than I thought they're cool though I like it I'm gonna keep it on there but it did add some weight to a knife. Keep in mind, this is only three ounces, full-size knife. Hard to beat, especially at 120 bucks. You might even be able to get them cheaper. With the wire clip, uh, it's a hard EDC to beat. I found myself just really enjoying carrying this one. With the action on there, you guys probably know about the Spider Cabal Lock. It's good stuff. I didn't have my camera here. You could actually just pull this back and sling her out. Give you a flick. <clears throat> there you go. Thanks a lot for hanging out. Let me know what you think. If you have the lightweight Manix, let me know uh, if you have experience with S110V. I'm working on it. I like what I've seen so far. Holds an edge for a very long time. That's it, guys. Have a good one.